even though I never got a chance to interview Eddie Van Halen, I got to meet him and got to hang out a little bit. And it was it was crazy. It was like he he has a little bit of the sort of crazy uncle component to him, <laughs> you know, and just said some kind of wacky stuff while we were there. And I was talking to a friend and he's going, man, what'd you say when he said that? And I said, what do you think I said? I agreed with every word that came out of his mouth. You know, yeah. it's Eddie Van Halen. And, uh, and it's just, it's, that was a kind of intimidating because I told him, I felt like I had to tell him, you know, I didn't want to geek and I didn't want to gush, but I said, yeah. man, I've just, I've been a student of your trip since 1978. And he said, you're not a student. You got 12 notes, just like I do. You can do whatever the fuck you want with them. And so, you know, I just, I didn't know what to do. So I kind of smiled and nodded, you know, but then I got to watch him play and it was just, you know, plugged right into the amp, no effects, no nothing, standing about five feet away from him. And it was amazing, you know, and this was pre-rehab. So the dude was good and hammered, but he played brilliantly. He played just beautifully. So I relished it, you know, very cool. You know, I hadn't even been on the job all that long, and I got to go to England to interview Jeff Beck. And he's he's an interesting case for me because, you know, I've always liked his playing. He wasn't necessarily like one of my hugest guys when I was just coming up, you know. And I'm, every time I heard him, I'm going like, oh, yeah, that guy's good, you know. And I always knew the legend and everything. But um, it wasn't until seeing him. It was on my birthday in 1999. He played in Oakland, and I went to see him. And... I just couldn't believe it. I I'd never, I hadn't seen anything like it since the first time I saw Van Halen or, you know, shows that really, really changed my life. And, you know, now I was a dude who had done some stuff, you know, and so I didn't think I was going to have my life changed. You know, I know what good guitar playing sounds like, and I don't think I'm going to be flabbergasted by one of these. And I went there and just couldn't believe it. And it was about 20 seconds into his first song. And I looked at my brother who was sitting next to me and I said, this is the best guitar playing I've ever heard in my life. And every single tune was just better and better and better and better. And it was an amazing thing. And so I got to meet him that night. And again, it was my birthday, you know, and I'm in a great mood. And I just saw one of the most amazing guitar performances that I've ever even imagined. And then when I am there standing in front of the guy, I just freaked out and I couldn't <laughs> talk. And I've never, I've never had that happen. Like not even as a little kid, you know, it's not uh -huh. like I got to meet a whole bunch of superstars back then, but it was very odd for me where, you know, it's, I'm, it's going through my head, like, well, say something, you know, you look like an idiot, say something, you know, and I just couldn't really speak. And I think I finally said, it's my birthday. And he said, happy birthday. And then I kind of freaked out about that. And it was like, really like very embarrassing. And so I had met and knew the guitarist in his band, Jennifer Batten. And when I kind of sheepishly told her this story, like, you know, I kind of freaked out when I met him. <laughs> She goes, you know, I've talked to a lot of heavy people who said the exact same thing. Yeah. And she goes, I don't know what it is, you know, but he just, he has that effect on people, you know? So I'm thinking, all right, that made me feel a little bit better. So I fly out to London and uh, I'm very prepared for this interview. You know, I've been over all my notes and everything and I show up early. It's at the recording studio where he made the record, you know, that he was working at the time and there's a pub next door. And so I'm thinking like, maybe I just take the edge off with a pint here <laughs> before going in. And so I do, you know, and so I'm fine. It's cool, and I know I can handle my business, and I go in there and check in at the front desk, and they tell me where I'm going, and uh, there's like a cafe, and so I walk up there, and you know, there's Beck sitting at the table, and so they just said, oh, hey, come on over, you know, and they pull out a chair. I sit down next to him, and it happened again. Oh, no. <laughs> and so he's there, and you know, he's like, he's a really nice guy, and he goes, you know, well, how was the flight? And I'm just kind of staring, and, <laughs> and I... I'm thinking to myself, like, say something. And I said, it, 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 it was cramped. And then I'm thinking to myself, that's so stupid. And he doesn't care. And don't tell him this, you know. But I'm going, like, it's happening again. So now I'm yeah, panicking, yeah. right? Now I'm panicking and just thinking, like, how am I going to do this? And so, thankfully, there was a photo shoot beforehand. And so I could just watch him. And so he's there and he's playing guitar. He's not plugged in, but he's playing and he's just killing, you know? And mm -hmm. so I'm just, I can't believe I'm sitting, you know, five feet away from the guy and the photographer's snapping photos and we're just talking and joking, you know? And so I make a couple jokes. I get him to laugh and I'm thinking mm -hmm. like, okay, so now, yeah, yeah. now I got it, you know, now I'm fine. And then the photographer did something that was really cool that he didn't have to do. It's at the end of the photo shoot. And he just goes like, Hey, why don't you go take a seat next to Jeff on the couch? And, uh, 
I'll get a picture of the two of you together. You know, totally cool. He did yeah. not have to do it. And so I go sit on the couch and flip out all over again. You know, <laughs> and he's got his guitar there and he hands me the guitar. You know, so yeah. here I am and I have Jeff Beck's guitar and I can't play anything, can't play anything. And I'm thinking, like, man, you should play something. Yeah, you know? yeah. Not to try and impress him or yeah. anything, but just play just something. The... You know, just make it clear that you know how you to play, play guitar. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. And so, uh, so anyway, when we finally got into the interview, a couple questions in, it was fine. And then I no longer freaked out. And it was really cool. And it was amazing just to talk to the guy and to see like how humble he is about his own abilities. And, and, and just, you know, he's a dude who's like really insecure about his own playing. And, and I think seriously, even though he, I think, knows on some level like how great he is, I think he's really surprised that anybody cares about what he does. And there was a point in the interview where he was talking about how it's so difficult for him to listen to his own playing, like doesn't like hearing live tapes or anything. And he's going, oh, I hear all the bleeding mistakes. <laughs> and so I said, man, I, I have to tell you that those things that you're calling mistakes for your fans, those are some of the coolest notes they've ever heard. And it seemed like he'd never thought about that before. It had never yeah. occurred to him. And he, you know, thought about it for a second and said, well, how fortunate is that then? <laughs> and, and that's kind of how he was, you know, yeah. he was just an amazing guy. And then he, you know, he talked pretty candidly about like sort of where he sits in the whole Clapton page Beck mm -hmm. pantheon, you know? And yeah. I think that he, you know, he, he doesn't compare himself to those guys, certainly not in musical terms, you know, and I think that if he ever really truly spoke the truth, then, you know, he would say like, yeah, you know, that he's just, he's done stuff that's beyond what they or anybody else has ever done. Mm -hmm. But then those guys obviously have had much more successful careers than mm -hmm. what he's had. And he addressed that too. When I told him, I hope, I hope this record of yours just blows up huge, man. I think it's a great, a great record. And he said, well, I could do with some beans. You know, I don't get the bucks that the big boys get. Uh, look at Eric. He's got more money tied up in one suit than I have in my whole bank account. <laughs> and so, so we, you know, he, again, you know, was like, he's talking about things and he was able to talk in, in depth about, you know, how he created the sounds on his record and everything, which for me was just fascinating. And we talked about gear. We talked about other guitarists, you know. Uh, I said, you know, you're a guy that people can pick out after one, maybe two notes, you know, who for you is somebody you can tell in one or two notes. And so, you know, he mentioned some of the obvious guys, you know, like, you know, Hendrix, because, you know, we sort of know most of what Jimmy yeah. did, you know, but you can still pick out Jimmy, you know, it's him. And, uh, but the guy he talked about was Django Reinhardt. Oh, That's like his main yeah. guy, you know, that he just loved him and just said he, you know, can instantly tell when it's him playing and he just, you know, he loves it. It was super cool. And then when he was again, like kind of ripping on his own playing, I just told him like, man, I, I just can't, I can't let you say that. You know, I just, I can't believe that you actually believe that. And I, I talked to some of your coworkers, you know, and asked them what they thought about your playing, you know, and it was, I had actually been able to get some quotes from some really heavy guys. And so I told him a quote that George Martin, you know, who produced the Beatles and produced Jeff Beck, uh, what he said about him. And how he just said, you know, this guy, I would let him do whatever he wants. You know, he's a king to me. And, uh, and he seemed visibly moved by that. You know, like, again, like it hadn't occurred to him that George Martin thinks he's a good guitarist, which is so absurd. But yeah. I think that's kind of how he keeps himself realistic, you know, day by day, is that he, he doesn't really think about those things. But as we were leaving the studio, then he's fumbling around with all his stuff that he's trying to carry out. And I said, can I give you a hand here? And he says, okay. And he hands me his guitar, right? And so I'm just thinking, yeah. like, this is so <laughs> cool. I'm carrying Jeff Beck's guitar. And uh, he's walking out, and he turns back, and he goes, I can't get over that quote you read me, mate, from George, because he's not one to give flowery praise where <laughs> it isn't warranted. And I said, no, he's not. And he's made a couple good-sounding records in his day. And he said, yes, he fucking well has <laughs> oh, that's awesome and so it was so cool <laughs> yeah. and then what i remember is he said uh he goes are you joining us for dinner and before i could say something his manager goes no no i must take him back to his hotel and i'm thinking 
I don't have anything going here. I'm available, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. I just, I kind of, you were like, oh, I, well. yeah, I took my leave then, yep. you know, and exited and just figured, all right, let's not be greedy here, you know, but it was, <laughs> it was an amazing thing. You know, I just couldn't believe it. Music Life Radio. Stories at the intersection of music.